Is this the discovery we've been waiting for so long? Could this finally be the evidence of extraterrestrial life on an exoplanet? James Webb has discovered biomarkers in the atmosphere of an exoplanet, and if it turns out to be true, it would probably be the biggest scientific discovery of the decade. In this video you'll learn all about it and there are exciting depictions of the surface of exoplanet K218b, so be sure to stay tuned to the end and if you like it, I'm galactically happy to get a thumbs up and a comment, because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to display this important topic to even more people. Thanks a lot guys and welcome. At least since ALF visited Earth, we know in principle that extraterrestrial life exists. Hey Willy! ALF! Willy! ALF! The 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 But joking aside, actually the proof for extraterrestrial life was still pending. And that's super mysterious, because with the sheer size of our galaxy, there actually has to be life somewhere. As a reminder, we're talking about at least 100 billion star systems with at least 200 billion planets, probably more. So there should be actually aliens, but we have not found them yet. And this circumstance is called the Femi Paradox. But that may have changed now, and I have to say I'm a little excited, because this really could be the biggest news in astronomy ever. Since last year, we have been observing the cosmos with the infrared eyes of the James Webb Telescope. It is the most powerful telescope mankind has ever constructed. And already the first picture of James Webb, which was published in July 2022, had it in itself. Here you can see the James Webb deep field again, which shows the galaxy cluster SMAX 0732, for 0.6 billion light years away. Due to the so-called gravitational lensing effect of these galaxies, it is possible to see objects much further behind. These are objects at inconceivable distances, hidden deep in space and time. But James Webb can, of course, survey closer objects, and that's exactly what it has now done. Namely the exoplanet K218b. This planet has it really in itself, he lies only 110 light years distance to the Earth. That is in cosmic yardsticks really a cat's jump quasi directly in front of the front door. It is 8.6 times as massive as Earth and orbits the cool dwarf star K218 in the habitable zone. The habitable zone is the area of a star system in which Earth-like conditions are possible. So mainly liquid water due to the right temperatures. For a dwarf star like K218 this habitable zone is then much closer to the star than for our Sun, because it just emits less energy and heat and you have to be closer for comfortable temperatures. So now I already have some of you excitedly asking, what the heck did James Webb discover? Using his high-resolution instruments, James Webb has clearly identified methane and carbon dioxide in the hydrogen-rich atmosphere. And there's more, the researchers also identified another weaker signal in the spectrum of K218b, and that likely points to the molecule dimethyl sulfite. On Earth, dimethyl sulfite is produced only by living things, mainly microorganisms such as phytoplankton. Lead author of the new studio Professor Niku Madhusudhan of the University of Cambridge said, Traditionally, the search for life on exoplanets has focused mainly on rocky planets, but Hycean worlds are clearly better suited for atmospheric observation. What are Hycean worlds? It's a separate class of planets with hydrogen-rich atmospheres and a surface completely covered by hot water. I don't know if you ever played Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, but there is the planet Marnaran, with its amphibious inhabitants the Selkath, a perfect example of a Hycean world. Not optimal for us humans, but perfect for the basic formation of life. And we need to realize what this finding means. Methane and carbon dioxide do not necessarily indicate life, but we know from Earth that they are also formed by biological processes. Methane, for example, is produced on Earth primarily by biological processes, such as the activity of methane-forming microorganisms. Carbon dioxide CO2, everybody knows that, we all breathe it out. Now that it looks like K218b is covered by a global ocean, one can already be optimistic that these gases could be of biological origin. But the key to proving extraterrestrial life is probably dimethyl sulfite, because that would be a unique biomarker according to what we know. 
While carbon dioxide and methane have been proven beyond doubt in the atmosphere, dimethyl sulfite is not yet certain. Professor Mathasudan said, further observations are needed to determine if it is indeed DMS. The possibility of DMS in the atmosphere is extremely promising, but we plan to take another close look to definitively determine its existence. Soon we will know more, as James Webb will now observe another transit of K218b. One will then analyze the light from the parent star, K218b, as it passes through the exoplanet's atmosphere, and can be picked up by James Webb. We can then use this transit method to provide information about exoplanet atmospheres. And you can see how incredibly powerful James Webb is by the fact that one transit observation provides a comparable precision to eight Hubble Space Telescope observations made over several years at a shorter wavelength range. So maybe with the next transit, we will already have proof of dimethyl sulfite. And if we have confirmation, that would change our role in the universe forever. Imagine that. If organic processes exist on this one exoplanet, then we must assume that there are some everywhere in the Milky Way. I'm optimistic, because K218b, for all we know now, offers the perfect conditions for life. A super-Earth in the habitable zone, a hot ocean, so the perfect primordial soup, and biomarkers in the atmosphere. So there's not much more to it than that. Professor Mathasuhan said, our ultimate goal is to identify life on a habitable exoplanet, which would change our understanding of our place in the universe. Our results are a promising first step in that direction. So let's keep our fingers crossed for the research team and hope it doesn't end up saying. See, now that's some bullshit. Drop me your take in the comments, are the new James Webb observations a breakthrough in the search for life? Are there extraterrestrial organisms on K218b? Or is the euphoria rushed? I'm curious to hear what you guys think. I will of course keep you posted as soon as the next transit is analyzed. But you can only do that if you follow my channel. And from the YouTube statistics I know that still the majority of viewers have not subscribed at all. But it's absolutely free, helps me immensely and you won't miss any galactic videos anymore. So people, subscribe diligently, thank you. Now I have another important galactic information. My German community has already received it, but no one internationally has yet. Recently my book, Flat Thought, was published. In this book I collected real conspiracy comments under my videos and then refuted them scientifically. So not only Flat Earth Theory, the classic, but also Moon Landing Denial and so on and so forth. This has become really very entertaining and also educational. And I would be very happy if you give me feedback if you would be interested in this book also in your language. On Amazon I've actually already received a review from a special fan as well, check it out. Biggest filth written by a sleep sheep, the book is actually only worth buying and then wiping your ass with it after pooping. Alternatively, you can just burn the book or best not even purchase it, because firstly it was written by an AI, and secondly almost everything in it is a lie. Absolute nonsense. Round Earth, which turns with 36,000 km h, but one does not get that allegedly ha ha ha. Morons. So if this review doesn't convince you of the quality, there's not much I can do. And now we come once again back to the ground of the facts of our round Earth. Researchers have found out that we are in a termination event of the Ice Age. They became attentive by the methane quantities in our atmosphere. What does this termination event mean for us? The amazing answer is in the next video, so be sure to check back next Tuesday. And if you'd like to support my work, don't forget to stop by the Astro Shop, because Christmas is just around the corner. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, guys.